What's up, Kyle gang? Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So let's go ahead and solve this problem, right? So we have this A36 steel rod, and we put it in here at 80 degrees Celsius, and then we're applying this force P here at C, uh, and we want to know the reactions at A and B when our temperature has changed to 20 degrees, right? So A and B are going to have reactions because we're applying force, you know, changing the temperature. A lot of things are going to change. So let's go ahead and solve for that. So we're going to head and wrote here the, uh, the constants for A36 steel alpha and E, and uh, let's finish our force body diagram here. So I went ahead and started it with what we got here, 0 0.5 meters, of course, on each side, and we have this 200 kilonewton force pushing this way. So to counteract that, there's gonna be a force here at A, right? And it's gonna push away. So let's take a look at A of X, and then B is gonna have the same thing, right? It's gonna push away B of X. Now, we should do some of the forces. We know some of the forces in the X is equal to zero, we're at equilibrium. So it's gonna be minus AX, minus BX, plus 200, and basically we're gonna get that 200 is equal to AX plus B of X. So we have two unknowns, right? We're trying to solve for A of X and B of X. So how are we gonna go for this, right? Well, we need a whole new set of equations to solve for those two things. Now to do that, we're gonna need to do our displacement equation. So what do we know about this thing going on here? Well, we're locked in at A and B. So we're compressed against, and we can't expand outward, or we can't expand inward, right? So, uh, that means that our displacement is going to be equal to zero, right? Our total displacements, some of the displacements, can be equal to zero. But we still need to add them up. So what's happening? Well, temperature is changing, so let's add a thing for temperature. And then let's, let's add them up for A to C, right? Displacement A to C, and then, or not B, A to C, plus the displacement of C to B, right? This is going to make it a lot easier to break it up into parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some cuts, right? Uh, some cuts, you know. So, right, we wanna make cuts and analyze each inside to see what our normal force is at each point. So our first cut's gonna be here, and our second cut's gonna be here. So let's take this first cut, right? So we've got one, uh, stand over here. So we're, we have A against the wall, A of X is pointing out here, and then we're going out this way, and then here's our cut. So now we're looking at this here. If A of X is pushing this way, we need a normal force to go out this way, and that's gonna be A of X. Now they're pulling apart from each other, so it's gonna to wanna to expand that. So now let's look at two. All right, so we still have A. A of X still pushes this way. We go out, we have C here. Now C, we have this P pushing this way. So then if we go out further, and now we've taken our cut, well, which way is this one going to want to push? Well, we don't know yet. So let's just label that. Uh, or I guess we don't know what this is, right? So if we do some of the forces in the X, right? It has to be equal to zero. So let's look at it. So we have negative A of X, positive P, and then let's just add our normal. Let's assume it's going right. So then if we're solving for normal, we're going to get that normal is equal to A of X minus P. And that's exactly what we're going to use for normal, A of X minus P. I'm trying to double check that. Yep. So let's label this negative P plus A of X. However you want to write, A minus P, whatever. I think it's going to be easier this way. So we've done these cross sections, and now it's going to help us with this equation because we know what to plug in when we do the PL over AD. So I'm going to need a lot of space to write this, so I'm going to go out this way. So change in temperature, this is alpha delta T L right? So then let's add it to this. So displacement A to C, right? It's going to be that first one we did. So it's going to be PL over AE. So PL over AE of AC. And we're going to add that to the next displacement PL over AE of CB. So then going on to our next line. So let's, what we know, let's plug in what we know, right? Alpha is 12 times 10 to the negative 6 change in temperature, so T final minus T initial. Uh, so we were start at 80 degrees Celsius, and we go to 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature final minus temperature initial, I did it backwards, 20 minus 80. And you notice this is gonna give us a negative number. Now that's right, because a negative number means we're shrinking in temperature. A smaller temperature means that we're gonna wanna compress, we're gonna get smaller. So this is gonna become a negative number, and that's important. So the length, we're gonna take this length to be one meter, because it's just both parts. So then let's look at AC. So like I said, the force in AC 
it's just gonna be AX, that's our normal force, and it's pushing outward, so it's gonna make us wanna stretch, we're gonna make that a positive number. So here's A of X, that's an unknown that we're solving for. The length is 0.5, right? And then area, uh, we calculated, do we calculate area? Oh, it's diameter, okay, whatever. So let's just label that area, and then E is up there. We know E is that. And then we're gonna add that again to the next one. So this time we said the normal force is negative P plus A of X. So we're gonna label this minus P plus A of X. X length is 0.5. And then this is again going to be area times uh, elasticity, right? Let's just, let's just draw area up here. So area is equal to pi over 4 diameter squared, which is 50 squared. Uh, you do the mass, you get 625 pi uh, millimeters squared. Okay, perfect. So now we have everything we need. So let's just keep plugging the numbers. So did I do the part in this? No, I did not. But yeah, let's bring that down. 12 times 10 to negative 6, and that can be the piece of 6, plus. So now we're going to break up this fraction. That's going to be the negative P plus A of X. We're going to basically split those into two. So we can think that this A of X and this A of X are going to come together. So let's bring out an A of X. And this is going to become 0.5 over AE plus this one, 0.5 over AE. Then what we're going to be left with is this negative P. So we're going to have the minus P, 0.5, over AE. Now we know P is 200 kilonewtons, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that 200 there. All right, nice. So now we have a really simple equation, right? A is that number, E is that number. Uh, we have A of X, that's the only unknown we have. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do the math on this. We're going to do the math on this, move it to the other side, divide it by this quantity, Pretty easy, right? I hope you guys know how to do this by now. And if you do the math and all that, you get that A of X is equal to 383 times 10 to the third Newtons. And there you go. Cool, right? So that's how you find A of X. Now B of X is gonna be really easy, right? Go back up to our equation here. Uh, we have this 200 is equal to A of X plus B of Y. So this is, uh, I guess I'll do this in a different color just to notch. So this is going to be 200 is equal to 383, right? This is in kilonewtons, so we got to make sure to divide by 10 to the third on that, plus B of X, right? Of course, do the math on that. We have B of X is equal to negative 183 times 10 to the third newtons. And there you go. There are your two answers to this problem. Right, pretty cool problem, huh? It's kind of cool that we can, you know, factor in all of these different things. The temperature is changing, we're applying a force and still find these two numbers just through a system of equations. Yeah, so if you have any questions, any uh, comments, uh, feel free to check out my channel, feel free to ask in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video, peace.